Pastor, when Jehovah's Witness come, they want to push us. When Mormons come, they want to... When you guys came, we love you because you respect our freedom. You don't try to manipulate us into your church. So people would open the door, a chain, just a little. What do you want? Don't argue with them. Please believe. Okay. Don't say, I will pray for you that you repent, you change your mind. No. What was the vision that God gave us? What was the vision in itself? The vision was points four to eight. Number one, Bible studies. Number two, community involvement. Number three, family seminar. Number four, evangelism. Number five, follow up. Now listen carefully. None of them work alone. It's like if you have an engine and you don't have the transmission, the car doesn't work. If you have a transmission but you don't have the alternator, the car, you need to have all of them for evangelism to function. We have one month evangelism and we expect to have newborn babies. I've never heard of, heard of one month pregnancy. That's abortion. <laughs> if you really want to have babies, you need to have nine months pregnancy. Why do we hope that after one month people will change a whole life? People are not ready for it. You need to work with them, give them time so they can struggle and they can pray and they can understand and they can make decisions if you really want them to stay. You understand? Number one. Number two, the community needs to trust you in order to come to you. If the community doesn't know you, they will never come to you. And so, number one, Bible studies. Oh, by the way, what time is it? Oh, it's late. We need to finish. And I cannot finish tomorrow morning, and I must leave tomorrow morning. I get home, I stay a few hours, and I go to Ukraine. I got to leave. But anyway, Bible studies. This is key. This is key. This is key. We had seven to nine months Bible studies. Not one month evangelism. Seven to nine months Bible studies. Time that people had time to think about it, to make decisions. Out of every average four studies, three dropped, one continued. We did Bible studies, not at the church, not teaching, not teaching. People don't like to be told what to do. Who are you to tell me that I need to keep Sabbath or need to believe or need to change or need to stop smoking? Who are you to tell me what to do? People don't like to be told what to do. Should be the Holy Spirit and them, not you, changing them. They need to discover it. They need to wrestle with it. The Holy Spirit needs to convince them. They need to make a decision, not you pushing them. You should not be a salesman. You follow me? Amen. And so, when we did Bible studies, Edge Meek did training, and he said, the rule is one. This is the rule. You don't teach. So what do you do? Nothing. You don't open your mouth. What if they ask questions? You don't answer. That's the easiest way to give Bible studies, if you, don't, if you keep your mouth shut. So why, what do we do? You are there to listen, and to pray. That's it. That's easy. Don't worry if you know how to give a Bible study because you should not give a Bible study. You are there to listen and to pray. You pray for them. You show that you care. You pray for them. And you, the single goal, though we, we want them baptized, the single goal we are there is not to baptize them, is not to make them Adventists, though we wish they become, is to build friendship. Christ method alone. He built friendship and trust. And after that, and Elena says that we will never win a stranger to Christ, but only a friend. You are there, why? To build? Friendship. Remember that. And so, Bible studies, listen carefully. In home Bible studies, we learned people that we didn't enter the house, they didn't get baptized. In home, people may not come to your church, but they feel very comfortable to go to their home. They are at home. They feel safe. So we went to them. We didn't expect them to come to us. Because very few would come. There are whole generations, people that would never go to your church. Good people. Some young, some secular, some skeptical, some that have prejudice, some that are just too comfortable. They will never go to your church. You go to them. Because God loves them. Number one, in homes, Bible studies. Number two, you don't teach. Number three, George Barna has done a survey, and in North America, between finishing school and dying, 72% of people never read a book. 72% of people between school and death, they never read another book. 
However, the survey says that they spend an average of nine hours a day between internet, TV, and cell phone. An average, some more, some less. Nine hours a day between cell phone, TV, and internet. People are brainwashed by media. Now listen carefully. If you tell them about Sabbath, they will argue. But if the TV tells them about Sabbath, I've never seen anybody normal to argue with the TV. <laughs> have you? People are so addicted to TV that they have no power to turn it off. They like it or not, they agree or not, they let it run. Let the TV teach them. Because they are going to listen and be influenced. It goes straight to their brain. If Satan uses the TV to put bad stuff in people's minds, shouldn't we use the TV to put the gospel? Amen. So instead of giving them a written Bible study, we gave them a written and a DVD with the same material. For young people who didn't give a DVD, we gave them a memory stick with the same video that was exactly the Bible study word by word. And guess what? People that we asked them to read, very, I don't remember, about 5% read. People that they, we ask them to watch, 100% they all watch it. People love to watch it. And they don't argue with the TV. And they listen one, oh, I'm not sure I agree. What do you think? I don't say, please believe. I say, that's between you and God. I'm not here to change you. I'm here to pray for you. That's your choice. God gave you freedom, and I respect that freedom. You know what they told us? Pastor, when Jehovah's Witness come, they want to push us. When Mormons come, they want to... When you guys came, we love you because you respect our freedom. You don't try to manipulate us into your church. I said, hey, we will love you to come, but you know what? You know what I told them? I actually, though I would love you to come, I really prefer that you don't come to my church. They said, what? I said, I mean it. Why? Because if you are not convinced and you come, you are going to create a bunch of problems for me and for the church. I want you to come only if you are fully committed. So please don't come. Uh, you know, they love that. They love that, you know. I said, I don't need bad apples. Only quality. <laughs> They're like, aren't you afraid that I am offended? No. I just don't want you to come before you believe in it. So it's not my business to call you to come to the church. That's your decision. If you want to come, you are welcome. If you don't want to come, God bless you. So we love that. Okay, we love you too. <laughs> and so, not teaching, but praying, listening, building friendship. Giving them video Bible studies that they could watch it. When they ask questions, we don't answer. I told them, Edge Meat actually told them, you say, listen, I am not trained enough. I am a nurse. I am a agriculture guy, I am a farmer. I am not trained enough to give you a quality answer. I need to learn too. But the DVD really goes through it profoundly. So I will do injustice to talk about this subject. If you are patient, next lesson is, or two lessons from now, is going to give you a full, real, good answer. So let them watch it. You follow me? And so, in-home Bible studies. Why? Because they have six, seven, eight months time to get it. Not one month evangelism. You understand? Now, that was step number one in home Bible studies. What we did, we called color press evangelism. You can call anybody you want, but that's what we did. And we said to them, it's very hard for us to mail invitations for Bible studies. How much do you charge? They charge 16 cents per invitation. That's cheap. Only the post stamp is about six, four, 55 cents. You remember? And it's going to go up now about 10 cents or whatever. I don't know how much. Huh? 55 cents, huh? But they say it's going to go up a little. I don't know. Anyway, and so Color Press Evangelism mailed the invitations for free in-home Bible studies. I want you to hear what I say now. That city had... 320,000 people, 10 zip codes. Don't ever bite more than you can chew. Because if you invite the whole city to Bible studies and you are able to give only 100 Bible studies, next year when you invite them again, they will not answer because you didn't follow up. 
So we sent one zip code invitations a year. So that was a 10-year plan. This year, this zip code. Next year, we didn't bite more than we could follow up. And we sent half of the zip code now and half two weeks later. Why? Because first two, three studies, people would drop, some people. And we didn't want to get too many. And my church member would not be able to go to five visits, and then he has nothing. He would get two, and then when people would drop, he would get another two. You understand? And each member would give an average of three, four Bible studies. That means that you knock in a door and you let them watch it. You do nothing. How we did it? People would go knock in the door. Nobody likes to be knocked in the door. <laughs> people are very private. When somebody knocks in your door, you really don't like it. So people would open the door, a chain, just a little. What do you want? Hey, you asked for a Bible study? This is your request, your signature. Please send me a free Bible study. And this is study number one. Bye. Why didn't you mail it? Because you get so much junk mail that you trash it. We want to make sure that you get what you ask for. God bless you. Uh, who are you? I have no time. Sorry. <laughs> Please, I have questions. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a minister. I don't know how to answer. I don't have time. But I have to deliver another 50. Please, I don't have time. Why? Because we had one member who got inside and he came back proud for four hours. I told them everything. <laughs> Next Sunday, they didn't open the door because people are not ready for everything. It's like first grade student, you ask him to do calculus. Jesus says, I have many other things, but you are not ready. Don't give them more than they can handle. And so Ed Schmidt trained our church. He said, you knock in the door, you step back two steps. You said, your Bible study, I mean, your request, this is the Bible study, bye. Mailman, mailman doesn't convince you to read the mail. Mailman delivers the mail. It's your business what you do with the mail. You know what that did to them? They were afraid that we tried to sell something. They were afraid that we tried to get them to come to our church. As soon as we said, bye. But uh, I don't have time. Sorry, bye. They got a message that we don't try to get anything from them. We just deliver. So they relaxed. So next Sunday, when we knocked in the door, this is study number two, they opened the door, actually. <laughs> Large. Hey, you brought study two. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Bye. They smiled. First Sunday, we went. Hey, study number three. Hey, we appreciate you sacrificing time and delivering Bible studies for free for us. Hey, you are welcome. You don't ask them, do you believe? Give them a chance to say no. Do you want study three? You don't ask them anything. You say, I, I will pray for you. But the third Sunday we went there, we said, I would like to pray for you. This is important. I would like to pray for you. Because people who want to study, they believe in prayer. If they believe in the Bible, they believe in prayer. When you ask them to pray for them, what you ask is that they open their heart to tell you their problems. If people open their heart to you and you listen and pray for what they ask, the message is that you care. When they open to you and you listen and pray for them, the message is that you care. Not too many people do that in our society. So we said, we would like to pray for you. What do you want me to pray for? And they opened. And we prayed for them, and that's it. We left. Next Sunday, the goal was to enter in. The goal was to enter in. People that we didn't enter the house didn't get baptized. We invited them over to our house. We invited them over to restaurant. We wanted to eat with them because when you eat, people open. And so, next Sunday we said, can I come in and pray with you? Uh, uh, much, most of them, what they said, no. I said, what's the problem? Uh, my house is not clean. Hey, if you come to my house, you think it's Hiroshima. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I am not an inspector. I just pray and then I leave. Don't worry about it. You have kids, you are busy, you have a job. I don't care. I don't care. I have my mess too. Come in my office and then you believe me. Okay, come in. As soon as we stepped in, we knew those people would be baptized. We stepped in, we said, let me pray for you. We prayed and we left. They knew it's non threatening. You don't go through the house. You, know? you step in. I don't want to pray in front of the door. The neighbors are, let's, let's step in. 
close the door, let's pray. Bye. Next Sunday, we said, if you notice, it's one more step, one more step, slowly, as they feel comfortable. Next Sunday, we said, can I come in and do the Bible study with you? Oh, come in. And they all said, teach me. We said, uh-uh, I'm not here to teach. I need to learn. Let's watch it together. Let the TV teach. You follow me? Let's watch it together. Ah, I thought you want to teach me. No, I need to be taught. Be humble, because we all need to learn too. Let the, let, let's watch the TV together. They watched the TV. They commented. If they say, well, I don't believe. I, I don't want to. Don't argue with them. Please believe. Okay. Don't say, I will pray for you that you repent, you change your mind. No. <laughs> Leave them alone. It's their business. You follow me? Guess what? Some people dropped. Some people kept studying. After seven, eight months of Bible studies, they had time to think, to pray. The Holy Spirit has time to work. Those people knew what they get into. They started to understand Sabbath. They started to understand state of the dead. They started to understand prophecy. They started, they started to get the Bible. I've never heard that before. I've never, nobody took time to explain. No, you follow me? And now, I want you to hear what I say. After three months of Bible study, how long to the Bible study average? Seven? Seven to nine months. After three months, while we continued with the Bible study, in parallel, we started step number two, community involvement, for three months. And tomorrow, I'm going to explain community involvement, family seminar, and evangelism. And those who take a little less. But for now, we stop. It's late. We need to sleep. It's very important that tomorrow morning, you hear the, re you hear the rest of the story. Okay? You need to know the whole picture. This... You don't have to be a pastor to do it. You can pray for your church without being a pastor. Nobody stops you to pray for everyone in the church. And listen carefully. You don't have to do this at a church scale. You can do it with two neighbors. You can start a prayer group in your home with your neighbors. You invite them to an unhealthy ice cream and to prayer. <laughs> you say, hey, let's eat an ice cream together and let's pray. And you tell, I tell you what, people are so stressed in our society that very few would refuse prayer. And as you eat together and pray together and you don't go to any doctrines and you do that now and you do that two weeks later and you do that a month later, you will not believe how they open and how friendship and trust is built. You will not believe. We are afraid to do it because we don't trust God. But when you pray for it and you start working on it, you'll be impressed how good it works. So you can do this type of program with neighbors. You don't know because you don't try. Trust me, when you try, you'll be impressed.